You're listening to Episode 7 of the Bass Guitar Worship Blender Podcast. Brent Hasecker, and this is the Bass Guitar Worship Blender Podcast. I'm really excited about this episode because I've got Cody Fields of Westminster Effects and Nose Pedal. Cody is producing some really great products for bass players, and I'm just going to go ahead and let him get started and tell you all about what he's doing, and I think you'll really enjoy it. An interview with Cody Fields of Westminster Effects and Nose Pedal. Hello. Well, today I've got Cody Fields with me on the podcast. He is, I guess you could say, the the president owner of Westminster Effects, and he also has Nose Pedal uh, as well, all under his same umbrella. And I invited him on here to uh, to talk with us, basically about he's got a lot of uh, a lot of cool stuff for guitar players, a lot of cool guitar pedals, and uh, quite a few actually. But he doesn't have that many yet of bass stuff. It's kind of, I guess. You you're starting to get involved in that market as well. So, um, but it looks like he's got some cool stuff that's being developed. And so I wanted to, to check it out and share it with y'all and uh, have him on the podcast to talk about not just his guitar pedals, but also his bass guitar pedal. So welcome to the program, uh, Cody. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, I've actually kind of got a, uh, it's, it's a funny story because um, I, I learned about your, your company actually not too long ago, probably about five or six weeks ago. I was listening to another podcast. Mm-hmm. I think it's the Worship Artistry podcast. And yep. uh, you were talking about your pedals and, and all of the, uh, what, what you were mentioning, the family history of, of, you know, of Christians and how we kind of overlook everything that's happened um, since the New Testament. And, and so your, your products are really cool in that you have, uh, uh, all your products are like named after uh, f- uh, historical figures in the Christian world or events in the Christian world. And mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. it was so funny because I, I heard that podcast in the morning and then there's a church me and my wife go to on Wednesday that we've been going to. And the pastor actually did a, a sermon. Instead of doing a sermon, he's, he, he did a, a history, a church history, and he covered like the exact same things that are all labeled <laughs> on your pedals. So uh, I, I was like, that's a sign that is a sign right there i you know i've got to i've got to <laughs> contact this person and find out some more about these products because that's like fate right there so uh, tell me a little bit uh, about your products and how you came up with the uh, the naming convention for all of your your uh, pedals yeah absolutely i'm really glad you brought up the church history because i was going to go there anyway at some point right <laughs> i figured you would uh, yeah so um yeah, I, I accidentally started the company uh, several years ago. I worked. Uh, yeah, I have a journalism degree. I don't have an electrical engineering degree or anything like that. Um, but I graduated in 2009 uh, with a journalism degree, just in time for the entire journalism industry to figure out that they weren't making money anymore. Uh, so you know, several survival jobs and whatnot. Later, I ended up working at an advertising agency, and when that turned sour, uh, I quit with the intention of going freelance. And in the meantime, I've always been a DIY guy. I got a soldering iron, whatever. Uh, why not build a pedal? So I get a, a blues breaker uh, style pedal from General Guitar Gadgets, and mm-hmm. I was like, man, that was fun. And I got ideas, and I can make money off this. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so kind of kind of, you know, my personality is if I get into something, I I tend to get really into it, you know. So I'm a I'm a huge baseball fan. I've been a Braves fan my whole life. Um I also, you know, I even help coach baseball at my old Christian high school here in Greenville. Um, you know, guitar, you know, I've got I've al- I already had too many guitars and too many pedals. <laughs> so why not build them and save some money while we're at it? Um there but at go. the same time, uh just because of my background and and the church that I grew up in, um, there was a lot of legalism. And when I finally understood, like, man, we got 2,000 years of, of rich theology uh, coming down the pipeline through church history, I just delved headlong into that. Uh, you know, so one of the first guys that really got me into that was, you know, the likes of John Piper, who was, you know, you know, it's, 
the that's what the Piper Drive is paying tribute to. Um, mm-hmm. So guys like Piper or Sproul and, and you know on down through the through the ages, and it's it's one of those things where. Um, the American church has, you know, I, I don't like to rip on the church by any means at all, ever. Uh, it is kind of the bride of Christ, so uh, probably mm-hmm. shouldn't be talking junk about it. Um, but one of our weaknesses in the American church in the 21st century is we have no idea where we came from. Uh, we we tend to treat church history as the book of Acts and then Billy Graham. <laughs> and then, you know, never mind the 1900 and some odd years between those. Um, right. So... Um, so one of my big goals within Westminster effects obviously is to equip, uh, church musicians within the kingdom, uh, but to also encourage them, Hey, read a book, (laughs) preferably start Mm -hmm. with the Bible, uh, start with the Bible, but there's all of these, you know, just rich, rich teachings based off of scripture, uh, that we have for 2000 years, even some of the guys who, you know, were in the first century of the church, guys like Polycarp who hung out with John, um, have some really cool things to say and, uh, and to teach us about God with how they've read the scriptures. So, uh, that's one of my big things is, and that's really just how I got it. Got mm-hmm. the uh, overall theme for the brand. Got it. Got it. Well, in, in like the two base products that you have, uh, the Wittenberg, uh, base preamp and the, uh, the Calvin compressor, tell us a little about the, uh, the history behind, uh, those two products and the, the naming convention. And some of your products are kind of funny too, in that you've kind of got inside jokes and you've got things where also, you're, yes. uh, you know, the history of the church <laughs> is kind of built into you. Maybe the way you're naming something after is, it, you know, kind of relates in some way to the particular thing that you're naming it after. So tell me a little bit about those two particular products and how it kind of ties into the pedals. Yeah, so um, the uh, the Wittenberg bass preamp is part of my DI series where I also have the Geneva amp sim and the Zurich preamp. Uh, those are... For all intents and purposes, the three main cities during the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s, uh, John Calvin was based out of Geneva, Luther obviously out of Wittenberg, and then uh, Orig Zwingli in Zurich. So um, I, I picked... Uh, Wittenberg for base because, well, that was kind of the base of the Reformation with Luther and the 95 Theses uh, against the Roman Catholic Church and their practices at that time. Uh, if you don't, if you don't have Luther, you know, posting the 95 Theses, you don't have the Reformation. Uh, it's mm-hmm. you know the whole thing. The whole thing's. It, it, it loses its rumble, and anybody that knows anything about Luther knows that he didn't really have much of a filter either. So he provided some of the rumble, uh, just on his own in the first place. Uh, Mm -hmm. so, so that's, that's where, um, Wittenberg comes in. And then with the Calvin compressor, which, um, definitely works well on bass. Um, you know, I have more guitarists that use it than anything, but I'm happy for bassists to use it. Uh, you know, Calvin, John Calvin wrote a book called A Little Book on the Christian Life, which is essentially the condensed version of his Institutes, which was, you know, his enormous, <laughs> like, if, if you hit somebody with it, you might knock them out, uh, systematic <laughs> theology that he wrote in the, in the, uh, oh, I can't remember the decade, but in the 1500s. And, uh, mm-hmm. and it's a fantastic read, uh, both a little book on the Christian life and the institutes, even though I haven't read all of the institutes. So sorry right. to anybody who, who will, uh, accuse me of various and sundry <laughs> theological <laughs> sense for not having read that entire book yet. So you could kind of say then that Calvin is compressing a lot of data in one book. Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> and then the Wittenberg, of course, is, you know, it's a foundation that uh, everything is built on. Usually a bass preamp is kind of the foundation of the of the sound. So uh, mm-hmm. I guess yep. uh, kind of some clever some clever use of the, 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 the history with the actual product name. If I can make a play on words, and normally I can, <laughs> I'll just find <laughs> some way to do it and make it happen. And uh, it's, yeah. you know, it's, you know, we've got, we've got so many uh, incredible minds through the years that, you know, 
if even if I have to just find some obscure quote to make that work with the pedal, then I'll do it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But obviously (laughs) the goal is is to just outright make it. All right. This is the style. And here's how I can make a a dumb joke about it. So. (laughs) Right. Well, it's really clever because it's it's a good way of marketing. It, you know, it becomes like a it, it becomes fun to look around your website and look at all the different names and trying to figure out what oh, the, yeah, the meaning yeah. is, and it and it gets you interested in some stuff where you're like, hmm, maybe I need to know a little bit more about this church history. So it's it's a cool. It's almost like a little mini ministry kind of thing within your your product line. Oh, absolutely. That's that's really the goal. And even with the podcast, and I don't mean to jump the gun, but you know, it's it's let's get. Uh, our church musicians who tend to think uh, very right brain, you know, the you know creative types tend to be a little more touchy feely. Um, you know, I'm I'm more of a balance and maybe even sometimes lean more analytical or left brain or whatever. Um, so it's it's kind of aiming to bring some balance to to the whole conversation of worship and doctrine and what we're teaching and all of that mm-hmm. is it's let's get back to the you know even in the reformation uh it was one of their mottos was back to the source meaning let's get back to scripture what does that say it doesn't matter mm-hmm. what people are saying if scripture doesn't say it you know all right. Well, the uh, the the, uh, the product lines that you have. Tell us a, a little bit about. Uh, let's start with the Winberg uh, bass preamp. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Now, I've I've got a couple of, uh, a, a couple pedals from you. I've gotten the Wittenberg and the Calvin compressor, and also <laughs> one of your nose pedals, the uh, the, mm-hmm. the Looper. Um, tell us. Let's start with the the Wittenberg and kind of tell us a little about a bit about that product and how a bass player can use it. Obviously, I've got some some input on it as well, but I like to kind of hear from you what uh kind of your thoughts on it yeah i mean full uh full transparency full disclosure it's based off of the uh, yamaha ne1 the uh, nathan east Mm -hmm. signature preamp that they used to make and uh it's you know parametric eq that's kind of got this interesting mid scoop where you still you know obviously get a full range of really fat to really snappy uh type of sounds uh where it'll pair with a p bass or jazz bass or active pickups or whatever mm-hmm. uh has has an xlr out you know it's got its own built-in di stuff um so you don't have mm-hmm. to worry about having another di box afterward and uh, and it's right. meant to be you know it's it's only got three knobs so it's meant to be you know hey play with these couple of knobs make sure your volume's at unity or boosted or whatever you need uh but mess around with these two knobs until you find something you love set it and forget it and let's go you know because you know most yeah. you know most bassists you know for their or even most guitarists you know you want your one <laughs> main tone right uh whether right. it's you know you're whether you're using an amp as a pedal platform or whatever um so that's kind of meant to be like hey here's my here is my sound you know if you know if i want a warm p bass sound or if maybe i'm going for some victor wooten <laughs> style jazz bass mm-hmm. riffs or something like that um it's you know hey let's let's get there and just just play you know yeah and it actually seems to be you you know it's it's based off the uh the yamaha ne1 but it actually seems like it's a little bit more flexible in that right uh you know ne1's only got the three different positions you can have for the scoop where this has got a more right uh you know you can actually you've got a more of a range with the knob that you can kind of adjust it to exactly yeah it's it's got the knob so you get all of those various various settings within that potentiometer as right. opposed to just you know the i think it's three settings is that right um yeah on the so any one yeah one's a flat setting so i guess you could say it's only got two settings sure yeah so you you know there's that's tremendously more versatile um like yeah. the any one i mean the any one has some fantastic tones um it's you know so mine's getting roughly the same you know tone quality uh it's just that i get more of them <laughs> with the knob right more the variety switches. within that yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah i've so been if, finding you know, if, uh, i've been go ahead no, i was just gonna say like if you know it, it'll translate a little bit easier at least between you know if you're at a, a smaller church like my church runs about 250 on a sunday and i think mm-hmm. that includes the kids um so if if you're at 250 and you're in a little bit of a smaller space you can you know tweak it for that and then you can go to a you know an arena sized church or what have you um and tweak it just as easily you know 
Yeah, and I'm finding on the uh, on on my jazz bass is where I'm really having a lot of fun with it. Um, it seems like it, it really reacts really well when I have one of the uh, the pickups uh, soloed out uh, more so than when mm. I have both of them. Uh, so like I'm getting a really nice uh, sound on the the bridge pickup. Um, Interesting. That's not too th- yeah, that's not too thin. I mean, because I like that bridge pickup sound and that cutting right. sound, a nice little. Uh, you know, growl that it has, but sometimes it can be a little too thin when you're using it in a group setting, um, where it yeah, just it really kind of fills it out. It gives it nice, it gives it body, but it still has that nice um, teeth to it. I guess you could say. I, it's always funny trying to use adjectives to describe sound, but uh, uh, it's really working really nice on the jazz bass. Oh yeah, like I, I use a P bass uh, so I can get that rumble, and because. I don't know what mm-hmm. I'm doing with the bass. <laughs> I play bass like a guitarist. <laughs> uh, so it's just like, hey, let's dime, dime the knobs and just kind of go. Um, so, you know, part, part I won't, you know, I won't lie. Part of the product development was because I needed something for when I get put on bass at church, <laughs> which is, you know, once <laughs> every month, month and a half. It's not all that common. Uh, it's, you know, something that I don't have to fuss with. You know, just because mm-hmm. bass isn't my main instrument. So, you know, for, for those guitarists who end up also playing bass sometimes, this might be helpful for them, too. Yeah, it's and, really it's a really and, nice little pedal. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoy it. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah it's, it's something to be proud of. And tell us a little bit about the uh, the Calvin compressor. Now, you said most people use it on guitar, um, but mm-hmm. tell us a little bit. I know it's got the it's got the voice switch on it um, to kind of, I guess, could toggle between whichever instrument you're on. Um, so which would actually right. be if we're I guess you could use it either way because I've been switching it back and forth with bass and finding different tones but is there a certain way that um you you would toggle that voice switch to if you were using bass is it mostly on one side or the other or just tell us a little bit about the product yeah so the the voice switch is I mean it's basically a treble attenuator um I'm sure Mm -hmm. I'm sure you noticed that um so Mm -hmm. you know I tell people whether it's between guitar and bass or maybe even between something like a strat or a telecaster and a les paul Mm. um where you know you might need to tame that high end if you're playing a telecaster depending on your eq of course uh but yeah it's it's a fun ota based uh compressor uh really versatile five knobs um that's that's another one of those where it's man you just got to play around with it and then just be done with it because you can yeah. drive yourself crazy on on compression settings you know just finding that perfect thing it's find something that works but it's one of my it's one of my always ons uh where i combine it with my zwingli sdd 3k with a you know just a little bit of a boost with the compression and it's you know just sweetens everything up really nicely yeah and, and what i like about it is that so many compressors now seem to have less knobs you don't have all the full control over it or you really mm-hmm. have everything on it you've got the attack the release the ratio right. the threshold the level so you've you basically plus the voice switch so you, you've got the full flexibility of the compressor to really be able to dial it in yeah yeah and there's you know depending on what kind of of guitarist or bassist you are maybe a two or three knob compressor is best for you uh mm-hmm. but you know for for those of us who you know like to really nail <laughs> that that very mm-hmm. specific sweet spot uh in the tone you know maybe something you know like five knobs and a switch is you know more appropriate right right yeah it's uh it's definitely got a lot of flexibility to it which is which is something that i like um the uh tell us now the other pedal that i've got from you is the nose pedal which is not branded as westminster effects so correct you've kind of got yep. this secondary company tell us a little bit uh, it's, that's all the same ownership there yeah so um about two and a half years ago, I acquired a uh, nose pedal from its original owner who was uh, based out of Nashville. And um, so it's nose pedal is utility stuff. It's um, the stuff it's at least for the most part, stuff that everyone needs and uh, in, in various different colors. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. the, the original artwork for Nose, for those who aren't familiar, and you can look this up, was uh, basically hand-painted eyeballs where the original owner, Aaron, uh, made his first one, and it was one of those chunkier knobs. I mean, it's a pretty oversized knob. And he's like, 
I can draw eyes on that and turn that knob into a nose. And that's literally how the company got its name. <laughs> and uh, oh, which, okay. you know, pretty, pretty clever. But at the same time, I am miserable at drawing and painting and that kind of stuff. So I switched it to a, a screen print uh, based you know, art system. So that's neither here nor there. Um, but nose pedal in general, you know, loop switchers, like what you have with the effects blender, uh, AB mm-hmm. switches, volumes, expressions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just tons of different things that pretty much everybody is going to need at one point or another. Right. A lot of the utility stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the blender pedal that I have, it, it's it's neat in that you can, uh, you, you know, a lot of people are using blends for their compressors or overdrives, and so mm-hmm. that if you don't have one on your compressor overdrive, that that blender allows you to basically loop in a compressor or an overdrive pedal, and then use a blend knob to be able to to bring it in and out to however much level that you want. So it just adds a blend knob to to any device that you may have that doesn't have one. Exactly. And and kind of, you know, the guys that I was thinking about that, I, at least that I heard from the most uh, was from Basis, who, you know, oh, really? they they want to play with, you know, fuzz, you know, a lot of a lot of bassists will use a big muff or something like that. And then um, mm-hmm. they want to dial in how much clean tone they have so they don't lose that low end, because with so many different right. overdrive pedals, if you don't have a very specific, you know, if, if it's not a bass specific overdrive pedal then you might get that tone but you lose that the the thump you know so yeah, the bottom that's, just drops out on it yeah so I, I i get a decent amount of guys asking for a clean blend for compression but i also had a lot of basis asking about that right right and the um um, it, 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 and you don't have right now a, a base specific overdrive, but is there an overdrive that you have in your lineup that would you would say would probably work well for bass players? Yeah, yeah. So I used to have uh, with, when I had the 1689 overdrive uh, version one. I also had a base version, but nobody really cared about oh. it. So um, <laughs> so I discontinued uh, the 1689B. Um, let's see what works well on bass. I guess the 1689 version two would work well. That also does have a clean blend in it. Uh, it's, it's, Mm -hmm. you know, everybody's, uh, tube screamer based, uh, you know, everybody has to have something based off a tube screamer if you're a pedal builder. Right. Right. Um, so that's, so that's mine. (laughs) And, um, let's see in terms of in terms of raunchy stuff like if somebody's playing metal like if they're specifically like i think of bands like Beartooth, um for for those of you who would know who i'm talking about uh maybe like the <laughs> osteen distortion uh that's kind of my go-to uh-huh. for high gain in general and i just came out with a version two of that um and that's okay. got a three band eq so you know you could turn up the bass on that and get retain your thumb so I, i'm actually right. i keep meaning to uh record a demo covering a bear tooth song just because it gets so gross <laughs> and so high gain <laughs> And, and I'm also, to go back to the Wittenberg, I'm also finding it works good as a front end to an amp, too. Um, mm. So, I mean, it's 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 definitely, I mean, not just using it as a direct uh, box, but actually sure. also using it as a front end to an amp is, is works yeah, really I'll nicely, too. Gives you some more flexibility. Gives you ability to turn on, a, you know, a different EQ setting when you need it as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of turns into what a lot of people use something like the mxr eq or the boss eq you know running into the amp that's mm-hmm. yeah absolutely yeah well is there any other bass related products that are kind of in the making for down the down the road or Def- i definitely want to bring back a bass overdrive i've got my eye on some stuff but it's just a matter of developing it uh being a right. one-man shop you know means i'm i'm over everything you know i build i market i develop all of that so it's that becomes uh you know basically how much time do i have this week (laughs) and um (laughs) so hopefully you know hopefully by the time uh winter nam comes around you know hopefully i can get a a base overdrive back out there because you know okay cool yeah i mean it's it's definitely something that i'm not a part of the market that i'm not really able to serve right now you know in terms of Mm -hmm. this is a base thing (laughs) Um, so yeah i definitely want to do that 
Cool. Cool. Yeah. Glad to hear that. I would definitely be interested in any overdrives that you have available for base. Um, as I'm sure a lot of our listeners would as well. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. And also the, and one thing too, that was, you know, when I got the pedals is that, um, they really look fantastic too. Um, just the design of them and everything. I mean, it's just, there's some great looking pedals as well. Thank you. That's uh, so shout out to Ben Horton, who does my graphic design and and UV printing. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure you noticed the uh, the nose pedal uh, that you got was it's single mm-hmm. color. It's simple. That's screen printed. And I screen print that uh, the only thing that's not done out of my house <laughs> with Westminster is is that UV printing for the Westminster line um to where mm-hmm. you know we can get multicolors and i mean you can scratch that with your fingernail probably even a quarter and that that art's not going to come off and uh ben wow. just does a fantastic job of of designing those and it's it's something that helps me too because i am awful with graphic design <laughs> when i was in uh when i was in college i uh, i had to take a couple of uh, graphic design classes for my major and my, my work was used and, and I was, I was pretty close with the teacher and she used my work as examples of what not to do for two or three years after <laughs> I had that class. So, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, a legacy there yeah. for you. Huh? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> not the one you want though, I guess. <laughs> not really the one you want, but anyway, you know, you know, freed me up to, I'll literally tell Ben, like, here's the name of the pedal. Here's the drill layout from the circuit board. Go for it. And yeah. every time it's just like, holy crap, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, you you were mentioned that you, you, you know, you were saying that maybe around NAM time. So I know you've done a, a, a few uh, NAM mm-hmm. uh, yep. uh, shows so far. How have those been going out for, going for you and kind of what's it what's it like? It's uh, well. This was my second summer NAM just a couple weeks ago, and I finally feel like I kind of know what's going on a little bit. Um, mm. Where last summer um, I hung out with my friends at Lyman Guitar, and that was my first NAM period uh, there in Nashville last summer, and I was totally overwhelmed. I had no idea what was going on. Um, I probably looked like a deer in headlights most of the time. <laughs> and, uh, and then I did winter NAM in Anaheim, uh, with the delicious audio stop box exhibit. So I was at a table uh-huh. with seven other pedal builders. So obviously I didn't get as much attention as I would like just because, you know, there were seven other brands at my table, but at the same time, right. it was a good way to, a good way to get my feet wet. You know, I didn't have to pay for mm-hmm. an entire booth by myself in Anaheim. Um, right. So that was that was like, all right, I think I'm getting, you know, getting a little bit of a hold on this and then uh, did Summer Nam again this year. And uh, all signs point to it being a successful show. And, you know, I didn't have the deer in headlights look the entire time. So that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And I, I heard like on your podcast, you were, you were broadcasting from, uh, from one of the NAM shows and it was, yeah. it was, it was amazing. And how much background noise there was oh going my. on. It must've just been oh crazy there. You have no idea. Um, yeah. <laughs> Where, so, so for, so that was just a couple weeks ago when we did that episode. And, uh, mm-hmm. but at, in Anaheim, where my location was, was so much worse. We had Joyo about 15, 20 feet away, and they had a couple 212s pointed right at our table. And cool. then, uh, about 20, 30 feet in front of us was Diamond. Uh, guitars and amps and they had a couple nitrox mm-hmm. 412s pointed right at us and they sounded amazing <laughs> but they also sounded really loud <laughs> yeah so i actually I'm sure after after hours yeah it wouldn't sound so amazing anymore yeah well i mean it's uh, uh, maybe i'm a little biased just because i'm a metalhead at heart too uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh I lost my voice by the second day and I ran into wow. the, uh, the vocal miss people on, uh, where they have, uh, free exhibitor parking at angel stadium and they'll bus you over to the convention center. And I ran into the vocal miss people where it's basically a personal nebulizer. I was like, I see you have vocal <laughs> mist on your badge. 
tell me about this because I'm about to die. <laughs> and it, it cleared it up and it helped me get through everything. And, and, uh, but yeah, Nashville wasn't near as bad. You know, it's, it's still, it still gets pretty loud, especially depending on your neighbors. And there are some neighbors who are much louder than others. Um, won't, I won't throw any names around or point any fingers, but you know, there's some, some neighbors who are, you know, relatively quiet and some that are relatively loud and you just kind of learn how to navigate all that. All right. Yeah. It must, must be a, an interesting show to do when maybe one day I'll, I'll get out to one of those. Oh yeah. They, they are a lot of fun, especially, you know, I, I sh- I'm sure it would be a lot more fun if I didn't have to worry about paying bills. Um, but <laughs> at the same time, you know, you get to meet people just, you know, walking around and, uh, you know, people that you've met on Instagram several years ago or, you know, you know, stuff like that. And then even learning, Oh, Hey, you're a believer too. I didn't, you know, just because not every Christian owned brand is, you know, overtly Christian in their marketing. Um, so when you got guys coming up and saying, Hey, I love your theme and what you're doing. And you're like, I had no idea, but you also make really cool (laughs) stuff. (laughs) Right. Right. Well, that's an interesting point you bring up is, is, is most of your customers, uh, Christians, uh, or, you know, when you're at NAM, I mean, are people non-believers coming by and checking out your stuff and getting interested in it or? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it really kind of depends, um, where, I mean, my, let's see, two or three of my biggest endorsed bands are, are secular artists. And, you know, they just either hmm. heard about me or, um, one of them, my wife actually ran into their lead guitarist last year at Summer Nam and said, Hey, come by the booth. And then she did. And now we endorse them. So, wow. um, but then, you know, I also endorse Wolves at the Gate and they just put out a killer new album a couple weeks ago and uh, they thanked me in it. And I wasn't expecting that. So um, I have their vinyl framed now. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's it's really like, obviously, it if it sounds good, it sounds good. And, you know, if, if an atheist wants Charles Spurgeon staring at him from his pedal board, <laughs> maybe, maybe that'll lead yeah. him to, uh, to check go. that guy out or, or Jonathan Edwards yeah. or whoever. And, uh, so that's definitely yeah, the hope there, step. but yeah, but there's definitely traction in, in the worship world and that kind of thing, because, you know, I'm kind of saying, Hey, you know, let's, let's dig in. So definitely yeah. a lot of Christians in there too. And, and, you know, guys coming up and saying, yeah, I'm with, with this other brand here. And tomorrow, he, you know, they'll say like, I've been following you on Instagram for a while. And tomorrow I'm wearing my shirt with John Calvin on it from missionalware.com or something like that. And that was, <laughs> that's always a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's, it's a, it's almost like its own little ministry as well. Just having, having that uh, artwork on, on the products and the naming. Oh convention. yeah. Oh Yeah. Yeah. And, and speaking, I mentioned, you know, the hearing you on that one podcast at NAM. Uh, obviously, you have your own podcast and it's, it's really I, I'm in, I've been enjoying listening to it. I, I'm subscribed to it now. Thanks, and, man. And awesome. um, it's it's. Yeah, and it's fun because it's it you know it, it it hits on a lot of my interest points you know theology and and worship music and and you know musical products and stuff. So um, I've really been enjoying it. T- tell us about how that podcast got started and and kind of what you do on it because I think it would be something that uh, you know some of my listeners would be interested in checking out as well. Yeah, well, I mean, anybody that knows me knows that I'm fairly. It's not that I'm opinionated. It's just that I'm more willing to tell you what my opinion is. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, and I hadn't blogged in a while and that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, this is a good outlet for me to talk about stuff. Uh, so, mm-hmm. so it's the Westminster Effects Doxology podcast. And if we can somehow tie something into worship leading, uh, we'll do it. Uh, whether it's, mm-hmm. you know, we, we talked about our most recent episode as we record this, uh, talked about the, uh, the Josh Harris situation, the, uh, the famous mm-hmm, or infamous, yeah. depending on how you look at it, uh, author of I Kiss Dating Goodbye and how he said that he's left the faith and stuff like that. And, you know, kind of got into the guard your heart kind of thing, but, you know, also, you know, like we're not looking to just bash people. It's, it's what led up to this and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll also, we'll pick apart songs. We'll say, Hey, what do we like? What do we not like? You know, sometimes it's, yes, all of this is really good. Sometimes it's, man, I, I don't know about this line, but you know, it's not a deal breaker. And sometimes 
sometimes it's like, man, this song's just terrible. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, I heard, one of those, I heard one of those episodes, yeah. and it was very intriguing to hear you go through it line by line. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's something I think we need to do a little more of. Is like, hey, let's yeah. let's think about what we're singing. But our but yeah. our tagline is uh, is that we're exploring popular practices, songs, and ideas in the modern church world in the light of sola scriptura and toto scriptura. So scripture as the sole and fallible, so the only perfect rule of faith and practice for the Christian. Uh, and, and Christian life, and then Toto Scriptura being all of Scripture. So not just the stuff that mm-hmm. we like, but sometimes the stuff that we don't like and might be a little uncomfortable with informs how we live and carry out our our Christian faith and worship. Um, so, you know, letting, and we even, we even had one of those today in church where we're in a series in Romans, and we got to Romans 9 today, and, and Bradley, uh, my pastor, who is also one of my co-hosts on the podcast, like, we'll be talking about that mm-hmm. tomorrow, and, and he even set up front, like, look, this is not going to be a comfortable next couple of weeks <laughs> because, <laughs> because this chapter is so debated, but we got to get through it. We can't just skip it because we're in this book for, for a reason, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's good stuff. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. We, we really enjoy doing it. And, you know, I should also shout out John Ross, our, uh, our remote co-host who is a Lutheran in Nebraska. So that always, uh, mm-hmm. brings in a, a, a really cool mix of, you know, obviously yeah. being more of the conservative <laughs> persuasion of Lutherans, <laughs> not, not EC, ELCA. Um, <laughs> but, uh, he's, he's a Lutheran where they have a modern service, you know, with, you know, the mm-hmm. more modern style songs and he plays electric and all that kind of good stuff. And, uh, but at the same time it is, it is Lutheran. And so that's, yeah. that's always fun to hear his perspective. Yeah. I think he calls himself the grumpy Lutheran. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, uh, church curmudgeon or a <laughs> church nerd from Nebraska, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, it's a good mix. Really, uh, good mix on the podcast. Yeah, but he he's really not all that grumpy. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really sound it on the podcast. So, uh, no. it sounds like you guys got a good thing going on there. Yeah, I sure hope so. <laughs> so some people yeah. have taken umbrage, but that's okay. Um, the goal the goal yep. <laughs> isn't to irritate people, but you know, sometimes sometimes the truth will sting a little bit, and we just need to let the truth do what it's going to do. And let God work through that. Absolutely. 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 Well, your, your, your pedals are absolutely quality stuff and, Thank um, you. you, people can, is, is, I know they can find them online. I'll give the website address, but uh, is there any uh, other than the website address? Are there any, do you have like any distributors or anything that we need to point out or? Is it mostly yeah, just go so, to your website? Yeah, it's mainly go to the website, but you can also see my dealers there. Uh, I have a dealer page okay. where you can see uh, whoever. And, and if somebody wants to recommend that I hit up a dealer near them, then by all means, let me know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then put in a good word for me. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so just westminstereffects.com and, you know, buy it direct from me, buy it from a dealer. I don't really care, you know. Dealers maybe uh, you know they they buy in bulk, so maybe buy it from the dealer yeah. instead, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know and follow follow me on Facebook and Instagram both for uh, Westminster Effects and Nose Pedal, and subscribe to uh, the Westminster Effects Doxology podcast on really any podcast catcher, whether it's iTunes or Google or uh, Spotify, whatever. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And something I got to point out because I'm guilty of doing it is <laughs> the the spelling of West Minis- Westminster effects. There's no additional I in there. It's not Westminster. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Cause I did that once. I'm like, why isn't it pulling up? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so it's Minster, not Minister. Yes, um, it's, just in case it, anybody I, out there typed it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I derived the name from the Westminster confession of faith. Um, right. even though, even, even though I'm a reformed Baptist, which, which is the joke that ties into the 1689, which is a joke for another time. But, uh, yeah, it's based off the Westminster confession. If you can remember that, then you can remember the brand. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Was well, there anything else you, uh, you want to share with us today? Man, just, I'm just, you know, let's, let's just thank God that I get to do this for a living. <laughs> Amen. 
Um, I get to I get to nerd out on guitar stuff and listen to theology podcasts and talk about theology and get paid to do it somehow. And I <laughs> tell people all the time that I shouldn't be allowed to have this much fun and make money off of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got to admit, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> Well, I, I won't take offense to that. Um, just just <laughs> as long as it doesn't cross over into uh, outright envy and you know, therefore breaking yeah, the commandment. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm quite happy for you, man. That sounds like a. I, that's just. I'm. I, you're. You're blessed, and I'm. I'm glad to hear that. I. Re- I really am. I really am. I can't deny that. <laughs> Well, Cody, thank you so much for joining us today. I won't take up any more of your time and um, just, yeah, God bless you. And and I I hope that your, your product line continues to grow and and be successful and get reached, uh, get into the hands of as many uh, musicians as possible. Man, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you uh, having me on the podcast and all that good stuff. I've actually enjoyed uh, some episodes of yours since you hit me up. And I really enjoyed the uh, just so, you know, any for any new listeners, go listen to the aging out episode. That was a really good conversation that we need more of. Oh, yeah, that was it. That was I enjoyed that one a lot. And it it was came up from a forum uh, post that happened on a, a forum that I was following. And I just went, my gosh, he's totally hidden on something and that I, we, I've got to interview this guy and get him on my podcast. And he agreed. And yeah, that was, that was really, yeah. I get so many comments on that particular podcast and yeah, that was, that was definitely good stuff. Thank you for pointing yes. that out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. Well, Cody, I'll let you go again. Thank you for being on the podcast and Westminster effects.com is where you want to go to, to check out his stuff. Awesome. Thanks a lot. That was Cody Fields of Westminster Effects and Nose Pedal. And that was really, I have to say, that was a really enjoyable interview that I did. It was a lot of fun to uh, I, to, to be speaking with somebody smarter than me, but not, not be so, uh, not be intimidated by it, you know, because sometimes, you know, you can get a little intimidated mm-hmm. if somebody's mm-hmm. pretty smart. So um, that was a lot of fun. Um, he was really a nice guy and just uh, really was uh, generous with his time. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the... Uh, and I say you, meaning my wife who's standing here next to me. What did, <laughs> what did you think of the uh, the interview? I thought it was really great. I mean, it sounds really interesting to me, uh, the basics of how those things work. But I don't understand all the technical stuff mm-hmm. about it. But I like the stories behind why, why they are named, why they are named, mm-hmm. or who they're named for, or yeah. what they're named for, locations. I mean, that was just really interesting. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely. Uh, what would be... I, you've seen the website and some of the uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the products. Mm-hmm. What would be? What do you think was the the most interesting product name on there? Oh man, I don't. That's hard to do. I mean, there's some funny ones on mm-hmm. there. Like you totally. Uh, I mean, I just burst out laughing at some of them because they're just hilarious. But I think. Um, uh, when he was explaining the ones about the locations and which ones were the basics, the basis for what we believed. And that was for the base. And then he moved up to the other two locations. I thought that was actually very clever. Yeah, cool. So. Cool. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to do. And, uh, and if you're, if, if you, if you met, if you missed that website address for him, that's Westminster effects.com. And again, that's uh, no, not minister. So don't, don't <laughs> add that. <laughs> extra eye in there because I know a lot of people are going to do that so I'm going to say it again it's Westminster M-I-N-S-T-E-R effects.com you can also check out his podcast at Westminster effects doxology at I guess iTunes and mm-hmm. uh, Spotify and all those other places mm-hmm. where uh, where you get your your uh, podcast from so just I guess in the search box just type in Westminster West see I did it you now did it too yourself. I did it now I'm trying not to do that uh, Westmin- <laughs> Westminster Effects Doxology and I know there's probably some people going how do you spell Doxology <laughs> well D O X O L O G Y L O G Y okay so Westminster mm-hmm effects doxology okay it's a really it's a really great podcast you gotta get you gotta go check that out and he was talking mostly about on the podcast today the wittenberg or as he was pronouncing it i Vinden, wittenberg, wittenberg mm-hmm. the german pronun- yes. pronunciation yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i guess i gotta start calling it wittenberg now yes. since since he calls it that um not the uh the southern english wittenberg um and then the calvin compressor and then also the uh the nose pedal uh, mm-hmm. uh i always forget the name 
the product. It's a, a blender. Uh, it's blender something. I forget the name of it. It's yeah. like it's right Don't over here. I should, I should go pick it up and yes, look at it. Should. But uh, actually, okay, I'll do that. Hold on. You do that real quick. Yes, the effect blender, and the that's effect what blender. that's what gives you. Uh, you can put another. Uh, device uh, mm-hmm. device uh, effects pedal mm-hmm. into that blend and kind of well create a uh, anyway people heard on the podcast they'll need me to try and explain it that's now that's right okay so the <laughs> the uh, so those are the products we talked about he's got lots of other products too so if you've got any guitar friends uh, mm-hmm. obviously i hope you do if you're a bass player on a, on a worship team i hope you've got some guitar friends <laughs> assuming your worship team has guitar players tell your guitar yeah. player friends about the, uh, the the website as well so they they can check out those uh, pedals for guitars because there's lots of pedals on there for guitar players and uh, so now make sure to check us out on our youtube video channel mm-hmm. um, because we're also going to be featuring those effects pedals on the youtube channel going to do some videos mm-hmm. on the on the pedals so that those of you out there who are interested in the product can actually learn more about it, be able to listen to the pedals, see how they sound. Um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll use them in, a, in some recording situations, also use them on uh, our worship team, um, try to get some recordings of that. Had a chance to use it at practice yesterday mm-hmm. on the worship team, and it really it just sounded really good, so I'm really excited about it. Maybe I'll play. Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> so uh, visit us on Facebook. Uh, you can ask us any questions there. Our Facebook address, which I never remember, is just go to Facebook and search for Worship, worship Blender, Blender Bass Guitar Bass Guitar Worship Blender Podcast. I always right, get the order right. of that out of order. Um, and so also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and uh, make sure if you like it to also give us a review. If you don't like it, of course, don't give us a review <laughs> and uh, we would appreciate that. So uh, all the music also that you hear on this podcast recorded by me, um, I, I never know until after I do, I, I do the editing what <laughs> song I'm actually going to put underneath me, but it's probably going to be Unstoppable God mm-hmm. by Elevation Worship with a little a goofy version that I mm-hmm. recorded just for fun. And I've been using that as some bumper music for the podcast uh, but everything's recorded by me and some future podcasts will actually feature some some westminster uh, effects being used mm-hmm. for for the recordings as well so i'll let you know which uh which bumper songs bumper music that i'm doing mm-hmm. actually features the the westminster as well so anyway that's it for this podcast mm-hmm. thank you for joining me and my beautiful wife Kristen. i mm-hmm. uh, just want to say also we just celebrated our fourth anniversary mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, at some point in time, we'll have to share our story about getting married in our 40s mm-hmm. <laughs> and what that entailed. Um, so it's a it's an interesting story. I think uh, mm-hmm. some people like to share that, but we'll save that for a future podcast. Well, that's it for this uh, episode. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for joining us. God bless you. See you next time. <laughs>